Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to this event. I'm joining you today on the go from beautiful Copenhagen to share news about the latest addition to the Capture One ecosystem. And it's one that many of you have been eagerly waiting for. Today, we're launching Capture One for iPad. I couldn't be any more excited about launching Capture One for iPad and having you here today with me. It is a huge step towards our vision of giving you, as a photographer, the most powerful ecosystem of creative and collaboration tools. We want to give you everything you need to reimagine your workflow, working across devices, from anywhere, with anyone. At Capture One, one of our core values is love of imaging. We are a software company, but our origin story is one of passion for photography. And passion for photography is essential to who we are even today. Many of the people that work at Capture One are photographers. We are inspired by the craft of photography, by those who go further than anyone else to find unique places and new and creative ways of working. Earlier this month, we joined our ambassador, Paul Reefer in Iceland for a behind the scenes while he stayed up all night, waiting for the perfect weather conditions to capture the beautiful scenery under the midnight sun. That is what Capture One is all about. Being there with photographers like Paul Reefer who go the extra mile to show us what we otherwise wouldn't see. That is our purpose, show the world. I am very, very proud of the Capture One team for getting us to where we are today. The breakthroughs and ingenuity that were required to extend Capture One to the cloud and to iPad were breathtaking to witness. And we're only getting started. We're more determined than ever before to empower more and more photographers to do their best work through our tools. Capture One for iPad has been one of our most requested products. When we announced the open beta, more than 10,000 of you signed up to try the app in less than 36 hours. Since then, more than half a million files were imported and edited on the go. I am incredibly grateful for all of your feedback and your help. Thanks to you, we have an app that we're ready to share with the rest of the world. Our goal with Capture One for iPad is to give you the ability to elevate the way you work, to take your images to the next level and carry Capture One with you wherever you go. This means carrying less gear and getting started with culling and editing on your way back to the studio or working from the comfort of your own couch. This app is the perfect complement to Capture One Pro on your desktop. Together, our lineup, Capture One Pro, Capture One Live, and now Capture One for iPad is here to empower our growing community of photographers so that you can show the world. We're very excited to see how you will use Capture One for iPad to create the incredible images that our community is known for. We have huge plans for the app, so please keep watching to hear about what you will be getting now and in the future. And with that, I turn it over to my colleague, Mathieu. Thanks, Rafael. We're very excited to share our first mobile app that will make your workflow even more flexible. We wanted to make sure that you can work on your images from wherever you are. Our ambition with this first version was to let you start on the roads and finish at home. The iPad app has a lot of the features that you're already familiar with from the desktop, but they have been designed for the way you work on a tablet. It also comes with the exact same image engine as you would find on a desktop. So what you get on the iPad is not a lesser version of Capture One, but an additional tool that lets you work wherever you go. So let's get into some of the things that make Capture One for iPad special. With our app, we guarantee superb image quality no matter where you are. As I mentioned, the iPad app has the same image quality and color rendering functionalities as the desktop app, but now in a more portable package. This lets you bring the power of our RAW converter anywhere you go, and you can be confident that the image you export will be the same quality as if you were working on your computer. With Capture One for iPad, you can take your professional workflows anywhere and be super efficient. You can go through the entire process. 
import photos, make selects, apply adjustments, and export your final photos to clients and colleagues if you need to deliver quickly. Culling images, applying styles, and batch editing are all available at your fingertips, ready for you to take them on the streets, to a wedding, to an event, or to your couch. Starting on a road is just the first half of it. We wanted to make sure that you can continue working at home and deliver amazing images. So we have built several ways for you to transfer your photos from the iPad to your computer. One of those ways is our first cloud service to transfer raw files and their adjustments. With this, you're able to pick up where you left off on the iPad and continue working on Capture One Pro desktop. Finally, while Capture One for iPad has the same processing power and many of the same functionalities as the desktop version, this iPad app is made specifically for tablets. The interface is designed to fit the way you hold and interact with an iPad. You can use it with both hands, just one, or even a pen. The app also includes intuitive gestures and touch interactions like swiping between pictures, easily dragging controls, long pressing to see before and after of your photo, and double tapping to view your images at 100% zoom level. We have designed the app to be easy to navigate for both new users and people who are used to work with Capture One Pro. Now to the question on everyone's mind. When will tethering be available for iPad? Early on, when we started the development, after evaluating the use cases of the iPad, we decided to first focus on photographers who shoot on the go. Because tethering is mostly used in studio shooting, it went down our list of priorities. But not too low, as we realized that there's a huge variety of photographers who would benefit from it. But tethering has proved to be a challenging feature to develop, so to not slow down the release of an app that we believe will bring a lot of value to you right now, we have decided to leave it out of the initial release. However, we want it as much as you, and everyone at Capture One is very excited about this feature. So we have been working closely with Apple over the past few months, and we can now safely say that the iPad version of Tethering is coming soon. Follow us on our different channels to be the first to find out when it will be available. We can't wait to see the app become part of your workflows. In the meantime, we are already working on the next features like layers and masks that will make it an even greater tool for all kinds of photographers. Thanks for listening. We really hope that you love this app as much as we do. Now over to David. He will help you get started with Capture One for iPad. Good afternoon, folks, or good morning. Again, thanks for joining us on this live stream. And thank you to Raphael and uh, my colleague Matthew for their introduction as well. So what I'm going to do today as a very loud helicopter passes over my head, sorry about that, um, is to take you through a workflow on the iPad from A to B. So we're going to import some photos from a memory card. There are other ways to import, which I'll mention as well. Uh, we're going to do some edits or some selections in the iPad. We do a few edits so you can see how the interface works. We're then going to transfer those to the cloud and then pull them back down uh, in Capture One on the desktop. And then we finish off by adding those to Capture One Live. Uh, my colleague Maria is going to uh, throw a few comments at the pictures that we've decided as well. So that is the plan. So let's hope uh, the internet gods and wireless sharing of iPad screens is all going to work. So, so far, so good. So the setup that I've got for you today, so you can see, just so you know, I'm not cheating. So here's the iPad that uh, I've got on screen. So we've got our overhead camera and then currently I'm wirelessly sharing the screen, which doesn't give us the best quality, but it's hard to share the screen with a cable and import some pictures too. Uh, but then I'm going to switch uh, to cable after that. So first of all, this is how Catch One for iPad looks when you first uh, install. Uh, it's available on the App Store now, by the way, if you haven't already checked. So we've got an empty screen. So as it says on the top, let's fi fix this. So I've got my enormously large card reader here, uh, which I bought specifically for this live stream because it's a nice, fast, powerful one. Uh, so I'm going to connect that into the USB-C port. And you can see now it's detected uh, that I have um, 
connected my card reader and then we're ready to browse that device. You can connect your camera directly as well if you wish, not yet for tethering as Matthew said, but soon. Uh, and you'll be able to download from the camera if you're not carrying a card reader in the field. So let's say browse and that's gonna give me a preview of uh, all the pictures that are currently on the card. Now at this point, of course, if you would prefer to not import um, everything, you can just tap some of the pictures and uh, select those, but I'm going to import the whole lot. So just under, let me just uh, show you here for a second. So you can see select all. So I'm going to tap that. That's going to select everything. Uh, and then I'm now going to import. So I've just hidden the import button at the top. So if I say import, then away we go. Capture one is bringing in all those pictures. So this is a pretty rapid card reader. It's via USB-C. Uh, this is about 70 shots coming in, I believe. So there we go. And now you can see uh, all the pictures. So first of all, they're categorized by date. So you can see 7th of June, 8th of June, 9th of June. This was recent shots with, you saw some of the uh, BTS of myself and Ambassador Paul Reefer hooning around Iceland, taking uh, a few different pictures. And straight away, as Matthew mentioned, he spoke about some of the different gestures that you can use for the interface. So these thumbnails look fairly small at the moment, so it's a little bit difficult to see. But if I just do a normal pinch gesture and let go, then I can make my thumbnails bigger or I can make them smaller. So that's just the first, you know, kind of gesture that, that we're gonna see today. So. Typically, when we're out in the field, and this is something um, that we're doing, or that I was doing with Paul um, uh, in Iceland, is that we want to have a, a quick go through. We want to cull some pictures, add some color tags or star ratings or something like that, uh, edit a few pictures, and then move on to our desktop. So let's actually go for that. So now that we're going to go into the editing phase, I'm going to unplug my card reader, and we're going to stop sorry, wireless sharing. So let's just uh, kill the wireless sharing for a second. I'm gonna plug in USB and you're all gonna say a prayer and then make sure that uh, the USB is gonna pick up. Otherwise we will go back to um, wireless sharing again. And of course, you know, I did this about 20 times today beforehand and it was fine. And now, <laughs> There we go, it's coming up, we're good. Just took a little encouragement and a second plug-in to do so. Uh, before we get onto the selection part, in terms of other ways you can import, I mentioned that you could connect your camera um, just to use it as a card reader. Uh, we can also import from the photos that already exist on your iPad uh, in the Photos application. And if you wish, you can also import from files. So this could be um, an iCloud drive, uh, Dropbox or whatever, anything that you can access from the iPad's file management system. Uh, and finally, if you have, you know, an external hard drive, this is just a little SSD with some pictures on, you can also access that through the file system as well. So it doesn't have to be a card reader. Um, it uh, can be all those other devices as well. But typically, if you're working out in the field, you probably want to pull them down on a card reader. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and take our first look at the interface. As Matthew said, it's designed to be used with two hands, one hand, which we get to in a minute, or also the pencil, uh, this guy. So, um, snap you back. So we look at all those different ways that you can interact um, with the UI. Now on the left-hand side, we've got access to our various different tools. So we'll come to editing after we've done a few color tags um, and star rating. So I'm gonna to go to the very first one, which is my star rating and color tags. And over here on the right hand side, you can see the stars and then you can see the color tag like so. To move through to various different pictures, I can swipe like so, or I can tap a button on the, the browser. If you want a bit more real estate, we can hide our browser and then you can just use your swipe gesture. For personal reasons, which we we'll talk about in a second, I like to keep the browser visible and we talk about that when we start to do some rating. If I want to see 100%, I can double tap, which is very handy for checking focus. Note that it's nice and speedy as well. There was virtually no delay uh, to rendering the raw file. These are raw files. You can see at the top it says 
uh, DCS, DSC, whatever, 00111. Uh, so these are raw files from a Sony A7 III. So they're about 33 megapixels, just to give you some context. So they're not the biggest, but not the smallest either. So let's go ahead and do a quick first pass, and I'm gonna tag uh, a few pictures uh, green. So on this first one, so double check focus, that looks good to me. So over here on the right, this square at the bottom, and then I can tag that green, and I can keep uh, this interface open as well. So when I go to my next set of pictures, it doesn't blank that out, so I can keep going ahead and adding color tags and ratings and so on. So why do I like to keep the browser up? So sometimes if you've got some similar scenes, like with clouds moving in this respect, it could be a model's face uh, that is just turning slightly. When you're swiping, you can't necessarily see a subtle difference. But if you tap, then you can see, okay, I've just reframed slightly and the clouds are moving a little bit. I prefer this one. So while swiping is good, I think if you're standing next to someone and showing them, okay, let's have a blast through the pictures. If you're trying to pick out subtle differences, like this one, if we look at the clouds moving slightly and I've reframed there, I prefer this one. So I'm gonna grab that. Then we've got a slightly boring lighthouse, so we're not gonna choose any of those. And here you can see uh, this selection of pictures here. This is actually um, a panorama. So I wanna select all of those quickly. So up at the top, we've got a select button. So if I click select, then I can just tap the ones that I want uh, to, to highlight. So you can see they've all got this blue tick. It's just going a bit closer. So they've got this blue tick along the bottom, like so. Oops, wrong button, wrong scene. There we go. Uh, so I wanna add all of those as a green tag straight away, like so. So now you can see that they've all got their green tag. So now I can cancel out of that select mode and then I'm back to my operating on a, on a single photo. So let's grab one of those. Uh, we've got our puffin. So which one does the puffin look happiest in? I'm gonna say this one. So let's grab that as a green. This one, again, we can see the clouds moving. So this is where I prefer to just tap the thumbnail to see the difference. So let's take that one. These four, I've either got more or less sky. So let's take one with less sky. And four churches, all pretty similar, slightly different exposure. Again, double tap to zoom in. If I wanna see full screen, uh, then I can just tap once and that hides all the tools. Double tap, 100%, and I can see nicely in as well. So tap once quickly, double tap 100%, tap once again, back to full screen. You might have noticed that we've got uh, a lack of histogram at the moment. I can bring this up with just a two finger tap. So if I hide the overhead camera, so two finger tap just nicely shows and hides that. So once again, two finger tap, like so, nice and simple. Uh, if you just wanna check exposure adjustments and so on whilst you're editing the picture. Uh, let's take one of them. Uh, so we've got less sky or more sky, let's take this one. And then finally out of this sequence, let's find something with dramatic-ish clouds. So let's go for that. And finally, let's take a waterfall. And we've got the water just moving slightly so I can flip back in between nice and fast. So I'm gonna take that one. So now I've got a bunch of green tag pictures. So it would be helpful if I could filter those down, which I can do in the top left-hand corner. You can see the little uh, funnel picture there. So if I tap the funnel, I'm gonna choose, okay, just filter by green. So now I've got my green selected pictures, like so. If I go back to the gallery view, then that also reflects that filtered selection that I've got. We're gonna put those in an album shortly after we've edited, but that's key to the cloud transfer up into Capturon's cloud, and it is our own cloud, and then pulling that back down into the desktop. Now I'm not gonna upload however many pictures this was to the cloud in a demonstration. I'm sure you don't wanna sit me 
sit and watch me doing that. So I'm going to go through and just pick four pictures out. And as we've already done color tags, uh, we're also going to use uh, star ratings as well. So let's go for this wide shot. So I'm going to add five stars to that. Um, let's not take the panorama in. Uh, let's take our little hillside shot and we're going to take a colorful church and then we're going to take um, a waterfall. So that's five stars each of those. I can add a further filter up here. So now I've got my four shots that I want to start editing. Uh, a couple of people I saw, I mean, uh, there's lots of questions uh, and I know Diego's doing well uh, in getting those and a few bots as well. Nice to know that we're popular enough uh, to attract bots. Uh, auto advance when you rate tag would be nice. Yeah, if uh, you don't know that feature, uh, that's something which is is um, present on Capture One where you can auto advance as you do a rating. And that definitely, I agree, that would be quite a nice, uh, nice thing to add uh, in Capture One for iPad as well. All right. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and talk about how to edit some pictures. We'll edit them first, and then we we'll drop them into an album, which I said is key to, to uploading uh, to the cloud. So briefly, as I mentioned before, on the left-hand side, sorry, I just moved this across a bit. Let's go in close. We've got our various different editing categories along the left-hand side. So we saw already star rating and color tags. And after that, we've got our styles. There was a, a question earlier I saw about, can I add custom styles? Yes, you can. I've actually got a bunch of custom styles in there and we're gonna use one of those. To get your styles into the iPad, all you need to do is drop them uh, onto your iCloud Drive or Dropbox or something like that, and then just open them on your iPad and they get installed straight away into Capture One. So it's relatively simple to do and you just have to, to do it once. Then we've got some adjustments for rotation and keystone. We're gonna use that today as well. Your general exposure and color editing tools, and then finally sharpening, noise reduction, and so on. Now, as Matthew said at the start, um, you can use two hands, you can use one hand, you can also use a pencil. So we're gonna have a look at those various different editing methods. So let's stick first of all with um, using two hands. So we've got our input dial on the right hand side and then we've got our adjustments on the left. So first of all, I just wanna crop this a bit tighter so you can see how simple that is. It's just dragging the handles, reposition the crop as you wish. Uh, when I move away from that, of course, now I can see the fully cropped image. So for this particular shot, uh, let's pull down the highlights. So all I'm doing is just dragging this wheel up and down and you can see it spin. So I'm gonna pull the highlights down. I saw a comment on YouTube earlier that um, they were disappointed not to see um, a reset button, but there is. All you need to do is double tap in the center of the control wheel and that resets it back to zero. So once again, let's pull my highlights back down. I'll open the shadows a touch. Uh, we can add a bit more contrast and also I'll add some clarity. If we want to check for structure, I'd probably zoom in to 100% and then add a couple of points of structure as well. And finally, let's finish off with a bit of a vignette. So operating with two hands actually works really, really nicely. This is how you're meant to design and uh, hold an iPad, if you like, prevents you having to move across you know, blocking your view, and then it's keeping this hand in one position and this hand in one position without having to do too much uh, movement. All right, let's edit another one. This one, uh, we can show you how the color editor works. But first of all, let's bring those highlights back down a bit because it's a little bit bright in the clouds. If you want to see it before and after, you can just tap once and hold. So I can't point to it, but you see up in the top left-hand corner, uh, let's look at this. So if you see up in the top left hand corner, you can see before and after and it hides the tools. So you can do a, a, a quick assessment of how your adjustments are going. 
Uh, I might want to bring the, let's bring the brightness down slightly. That might be a bad idea, but let's see. Uh, bump up the clarity and let's show you the color editor. So if I tap on the color on the left hand side, we've got all my different color ranges on the right, which are the same as Capture One Pro. As Matthew said earlier, earlier on, a really important point to um, emphasize is that you're not getting a lesser editing engine in Capture One for iPad. It's exactly the same engine, really, as we call it inside the iPad is in Capture One Pro. And historically, when we first started uh, looking at could we port Image Core, as it's known, into the iPad, this was really step one of building the application, was to get the same experience in Capture One for iPad as you did on the desktop, because there's no point having different adjustment tools or a different color engine if that doesn't transfer nicely to Capture One for iPad. So how does the color editor work? Uh, as I said, you can pick the ranges or we can grab our picker and then we can move this little target onto the color that we like. And it's chosen it here. So now if I want to tweak the, the hue, I can do so. Let's make this nuclear with more <laughs> saturation and drop the lightness down like so. So it's really nice to use the, the color editor in a touch interface. I think that's a good example of why not just put Capture One's interface into an iPad. Personally, I, I feel that would be a big failure because you've got an interface that's designed for mouse, pen, Wacom, touch in terms of using a trackpad, but it's not designed to be held or used like this. So just dumping that interface into Capture One for iPad could have been a shortcut and would have cut development time, but in terms of a user experience, it would be uh, pretty poor. Okay, let's go on to our church. Seeing as we mentioned style, so I've got a custom style in here from uh, Paul Reefer. So let's go for golden hour. Now, interestingly, this style actually includes some of the tools that are not currently available on Capture One for iPad, but because it's the same engine inside Capture One for iPad as Capture One Pro, those the effects of those tools in a style will still be shown to you on screen. So if there's a curve, uh, for example, then that will be represented on the display. You just can't necessarily edit it. So if you're using one of your own styles or one of the styles that you've bought from us, perhaps you will still see the effect on Capture One for iPad. So that's really important. So certainly Paul, who I think is watching this was one of your golden hour styles. I'm pretty sure there's adjustments on there which are not currently accessible in Capture One for iPad. So that's done you know, a pretty nice job of just adding that style. This was shot in golden hour, which was about six or seven hours at the time. Let's fix some keystones. So if I scroll down, we can pull that keystone down to something like that. I'll probably run an auto keystone in Capture One on the desktop, but at least it gets me visually to uh, a better place. Okay, other adjustments, uh, let's see. So that's opened up the shadows. Now we can see all the adjustments with the dot next to it. So this little dot next to the tool indicates that there is an, an adjustment present. So it's a quick visual indication to know, okay, there's something going on with that tool. So I'm gonna bring the shadows, they've been opened up by 35. So I'm gonna pull those down slightly, just a small edit. So even though I've applied that style, I can go on to adjust it, no problem. Oh, as Paul says, if I bring this up, yep, there's a Luma curve and some levels, but all of that is still applied because it's the same engine. Uh, last one, let's go to our waterfall um, and let's use the pen this time. So a lot of you have, have mentioned, oh, I have an Apple Pencil. I'd love to be able to use this with uh, the interface and you can do so. Um, one thing I do want to show you, let's just switch to this camera. Up in the top right hand corner, there's a little preferences button here. And one thing that we can do is turn on tools right, like so. So that will switch uh, the tools from left to right. Certainly, if you're more comfortable with 
switching the orientation of your hands, that's great. But it also means we can edit in a slightly different way and you don't need a pencil for this. But what it does mean, first of all, I'm gonna put the pencil down. If you want to edit one-handed, let's say, let's go to exposure. If I long tap on exposure, so notice the tool disappears, and I swipe up, I'm gonna go up a lot so you can see the change, and I swipe down, then it's a bit like a speed edit in Capture One, which is awesome. So let's just double tap. I can double tap in the actual field itself to reset it. I don't have to double tap um, in the dial. Um, if you're using a pen, which some of you prefer, it's the same thing. So I can long press on the uh, adjustment and then just swipe up and down. So you can see my pencil moving. You can see the dial spinning. So you know the value that we've got. And just by moving up and down, we can make that adjustment. It's actually uh, one of my favorite ways to edit, to be honest. So I'm finding more and more, I'm switching the tools to the right. And I'm using a pencil, if I remember to keep it attached and charged, um, to do the adjustments. So I find that really nice. So I'm going to bring the exposure down a bit. Uh, we can just scroll to get the other tools. So I'm going to pull my highlights uh, down to get a bit more of that blue sky back. Uh, let's also add a bit of contrast. So I'm going to swipe up. And then let's also add a bit of clarity as well. A bit worried about my shadows, so let's go to HDR and let's open up the shadows a touch. And this one I think is pretty sharp. So let's also add a little bit of structure. If I go totally crazy, you can see it get really crunchy. Don't want to do that with structure. So let's add a few points as well. So that's um, a particularly nice way, or just an alternative way of, of editing, to be honest. Again, it, it really depends a lot on how you prefer to, let's just put this back, how you prefer to hold it. Do you wanna have the convenience of operating with two hands? Do you prefer to sit, if you're right or left-handed, and do it this way? It's entirely up to you so it's all about choices so that's that option up in the top left where we can switch tools left uh, and tools right there's a couple of other options in there there's some preference things you can see in setting there's an on off button for histogram uh, but as i said two finger tap uh, to bring up the histogram as well all right so we've done some edits uh, on our ipad so what would uh, the next stage be so you've got a couple of choices. We can export. So if I tap on the export button in the top uh, right hand corner, so that's this one here, the, the standard export icon, nothing different about that. Then this gives us a couple of options for exporting. So we can go to JPEG. We can also go to EIP, which is a raw file and adjustments. So if you don't want to use the cloud service, which personally wouldn't make any sense, but if you don't want to use the cloud service, serve, service, you can export a raw file with the adjustments packaged up as an EIP. Drop that on your Dropbox or iCloud or whatever, and then transfer that elsewhere. Or perhaps you just want to send some files to a friend, retoucher or whatever. You know, you're not on the same Capture One account then, so this way you can send an EIP with your edits already, whether that's to yourself or someone else. Otherwise, for JPEG, we've got full resolution, web optimized, and Instagram as well, and you can also add your own watermark. When you come to export, then you get access to the normal Apple OS sharing of airdropping, sending it as a text, sending it as an email, all that kind of stuff, you know, built into Apple iOS. So that's one option. So you can do that export. So the second option is to go via the cloud transfer. Before we do that, um, I'm just going to check on any questions up on screen. Nice comment. Genius work. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, as Paul says, one handed is good for coffee shop working. Yeah, exactly. So I find I could put the iPad, just sit it down on the desk 
have, I know that's not an Apple Pencil, but have the Apple Pencil in the other hand and then just, you know, edit quite nicely. So I think that works really, really well. Um, just checking on the last few questions. Um, let's see, I think that covers this. Oh, <laughs> this is interesting. I thought this was live, but the iPad says January the 9th. Well, there's a reason for that. And you notice that the time also says uh, 9.41. And historically, this is because on the 9th of January, I think this is when um, the first iPhone was launched. And at 9.41, that was always when Steve Jobs said, uh, and now for something else or along those lines. So if, if you don't believe me, I'll just pick up my phone. Tuesday, there we go, 28th of June, like so. And it's an hour behind because I'm in the UK before you say, aha, it's pre-recorded. So it definitely um, is live. Uh, but that always gets everyone because of this um, little weird Apple foible. Okay, slight digression, sorry but I would hate you to think that we've pre-recorded this. Believe me, I would love to pre-record it because the stress would be uh, so much less, but hey, there's no fun in that, is there? Right, okay, so we talked about doing uh, an export. Um, there's a few other buttons up here which, which uh, I didn't cover, but you'll figure it out. You've got undo and redo, you've got the master reset, uh, we've already looked at our filtering tools and then we've got the trash bin, uh, which is um, pretty obvious what that does. All right, so let's talk about putting these into an album and then taking ourselves uh, over to Capture On Live. So if we go back to our gallery view, we've got our four same pictures and over here on the left hand side, we've got the album section. So I want to make a new album. Now albums aren't necessarily always sitting in the cloud. So they can just be albums you can use to organize on the iPad itself, or they can be cloud-based albums. So I'm gonna make a new album and we're gonna call this Iceland Heroes. Here, uh, what should we call it? Iceland Heroes, yeah, that will do. So that's created myself an album. Four pictures here with some edits. We're gonna select all of those so select all, sorry, that was just hidden. So select all was up here. And then down the bottom, we've got add to. So we're gonna say add to, and then tap on my album and say add. Now those four pictures are now sitting over on my album here like so. Now, if you look at the little icon on the left-hand side next to Iceland, that's just like your traditional picture icon. Uh, but then we want to um, get those onto the cloud. So all we need to do is tap on here and say add to cloud and then Capture One's going to start uploading those. So let me move some space here and now we're going to switch over to Capture One and then we've mentioned, so I'm running out of desk space, this giant card reader. Um, then we're going to mention because someone I saw in the comments earlier said well how do I get those from, I've looked in Capture One and I'm not sure what I need to do. So what you need to do is go up to your toolbar, right click, and you're gonna say Customize Toolbar. And this will op our, open up our customization options. And what you're gonna find is something called uh, Cloud Transfer. And you see the little arrow pointing down because currently it's one way. So we're going from iPad uh, to, the, to the cloud and then the cloud back down uh, to capture one. So we need to drag that onto our toolbar like so. Okay, um, before I get to download, I'll just um, answer a couple of other questions that have come in. Uh, a question here which is is useful because I'm sure a few of you, a few of you are gonna be asking that. I'm using an older 12.9 iPad Pro, do the new M1 models have significant performance? I notice sometimes exporting files can take a while. So sure, there's definitely a difference between the, the A14, 15, whatever chips to the M1, but that still doesn't mean that you can't use it. It's still gonna be a usable machine. Uh, you just have that expectation of, of perhaps some operations being a bit slower. On our FAQ, and if 
Diego, you're listening, if you can put the FAQ uh, up on screen or the link to the support page, there's a list of our recommended iPads. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't use an older iPad, but the list that we've put up are ones that we've tested and know to work you know, quite nicely and so on and so forth. Um, I saw Brian was asking about importing EIPs into the iPad. You can't currently as Matthew, hi Matthew said so, soon hopefully. So that will give you, you know, some semblance of, of a two-way option, but currently that's um, not possible. Uh, let's see, um, style packs can be added. That was another question, William, you might have missed that. All you need to do is, is grab your Capture on Style, co-style, put that on your iCloud Drive, Dropbox or whatever. Any way you can get to it on your iPad, just tap on it and then it will import it into um, Capture One for iPad. So simple as that. Um, let's see, just check in for any other questions. And yeah, Diego's put the FAQ up. So take a note of that link because that's well worth the ability, or sorry, well worth bookmarking that because that has a couple of really nice support articles on the kind of things that I've been showing you already in terms of how to use it, but there's also some FAQs if you're thinking of buying an iPad, what's supported and so on. A uh, good question here for about calibration, which came up a lot in beta testing, like, is there a difference between my iPad and my screen? Sure, of course there is. Um, you can't currently calibrate an iPad. There's a new technology which Apple is talking about called reference mode, which could be interesting. But right now there's no specific way to calibrate your screen. Um, I'd recommend turning off True Tone um, because that can change, you know, the, uh, the, the color representation on the screen, which could be misleading. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it's a pretty good display on the iPad Pro. So I haven't really had too much issues going from one to the other. Um, but obviously for fine, super detailed color correction work, you're gonna be wanna working on a, a bigger display anyway. Okay, um, right, sorry, that was a bit longer answering questions than I thought. If I just show you the iPad screen quickly, you can see that little arrow next to, sorry, not arrow, cloud next to Iceland Heroes, now indicating that it's um, sitting in the cloud quite nicely. So I'm gonna hit this cloud transfer button. You'll see a slight pause whilst um, uh, Capture One checks my account and sees what cloud al albums I've got. Then I'm gonna grab my Iceland Heroes and import it to which folder. So which folder do I want to import to? Uh, I'm gonna say import and then Capture One's gonna download those files. So you can see the, the download time here. Now this might be a little bit slow because I'm actually running off, would you believe it, a 4G connection at the moment because there were some stability problems with the internet. Um, so we're, we're relying on 4G, but it's holding up so far, touch wood. Now generally on my proper internet connection, this would normally blast down really quickly, but that's why you're seeing it a little bit slower. But as soon as the number four comes in, so we've got our pictures on the right hand side, you can see the adjustments start snapping in, you can see the crop that we made on this one, you can see the um, adjustments and we can see Paul's style. If I go to the right tool tab, golden hour, shadows and so on. So we've already got our adjustments in play um, we've got our star ratings, we've got our color tags and cropping, composition, and so forth. So, forth. so all of that has come nicely uh, across. Now you might ask, well, what do I do with the stuff on, on the iPad? Well, that really depends on your workflow. If you're now picking up from the iPad, then I don't necessarily need anything which is sitting on my iPad, iPad now. Uh, so I could obviously delete this album, delete the pictures um, and so forth. But all your workflows are gonna be different, but that's uh, for you to decide. If I wanna take this off the cloud, then all I need to do is tap the little three dots and say remove album from cloud, and then it's gone. So simple as that, and that's a, a speedy procedure. All right, so what other stuff could we do in Capture One Pro? Now this isn't a Capture One Pro demonstration, 
but I can do a few other little tweaks. Uh, but if I just show you before and after, so you can see that kind of stuff that we did. Uh, I said I might do auto keystone on this one. So let's do that. Let's hit the auto button. I wasn't far off, but that's made it even better. And I'm gonna tweak the crop on this one like so. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with my adjustments. This one's a little bit on the flat side. So let's do an auto levels and I'll pick up the shadows a touch more. Structure looks good, didn't overcook that. I mean, the retina display on the iPad is really good. So those kinds of judgments, I think you're totally fine to make. So the only thing I might be more conscious of is doing like super color critical work, but also we're all viewing pictures on iPhones, iPads, and so on. So sometimes it's handy to have a reference uh, of how it looks on that kind of screen. So the last thing, if you'd like to tie up um, our Capture One workflow, actually, let's do a quick edit to this one before I get ahead of myself. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is put them on Capture One Live, and then Maria, who's hopefully still watching in the background, um, can instruct me via comments, which is a new feature that we added to Capture One Live as well. So what I want to do is just add a little gradient to the sky. So we're gonna use our, didn't bring up my mouse locator as usual. Uh, so we're gonna bring up the grad cursor tool. So I'm gonna draw a grad down here. Press M on my keyboard, uh, hold down the Alt key, just to shorten that grad a little bit. So something like that. And to make this even more impressive, what we're gonna look at is our grayscale mask. So that's the grad filter that I've created. So any adjustment that I'm gonna do now is only gonna affect the top half. So if I pull the brightness down slightly and add a touch more clarity to see those clouds, but of course, as the grad covers you know, the top half of the church, anything I'm doing is in danger of affecting this as well. Easy fix. Let's look at our grayscale mask and let's turn on our luma range. And what this will do is restrict areas of the luminosity out of the picture. So I wanna say, get rid of uh, the shadows. So around here. So now I've got a nice grad mask just falling behind the church. It covers a bit of the door, but I'm not too worried about that. So now any adjustments I've done are nicely wrapped around the church. This was getting a little bit too dark without that adjustment. So I've got my four pictures. Now I want my client uh, to go ahead and approve the adjustments I've done, tell me that she hates it or other improvements uh, and so on and so forth. So. What we want to do is send those to Capture One Live, which is another cloud service. So that's two cloud services we've got now to allow for remote approval and commenting. And Capture One Live allows a remote person anywhere in the world to add star ratings, add color tags, and now for the first time also comment as well. Uh, before we get to that, uh, I'm just gonna check a few more questions. I saw this one come up a couple of times. Are iPhone image files supported? Yeah, you can edit hike files, H-E-I-C. Uh, if you've shot uh, DNG files on an iPhone, then you can also edit those. We had a go at that in Iceland as well. So yeah, that works um, quite nicely. Uh, let's see other questions. Um, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> make a request to the support team. I'm not sure what Paul asked, but I'd uh, dread to think. Um, <laughs> let's see, I use multiple catalogs and sessions. How do I sync? Well, basically, Paolo, the cloud transfer button, um, so if I go to cloud transfer again, so I'm importing to my particular open session or catalog. So I've got this session open, Capture One for iPad launch, so I would be importing into this one. But if I was opening another catalog or session, then I could import into that one. So you're making the choice of where the files go in your ecosystem of Capture One. So whether you're working on multiple sessions, uh, whether you're working on um, a single catalog, you always specify where the pictures are gonna be saved 
onto your computer. So just to be absolutely clear, when we do a cloud transfer, they're not staying on the cloud, they are being transferred to the area of your file system of your choice. So that's why we have this import to option as well. Um, okay, I'm sure I've missed a bunch of questions, but I know Matthew and Diego are mopping them all up as well. So let's get these onto Capture on Live, and then you can see how that works. Now I know this is an iPad um, launch event, but it's also nice to see that the whole ecosystem working together as well. Right, so um, I'm going to hit the live button up here. And I'm going to share my capture folder because these four pictures are just sitting in the capture folder. But you can share other collections like albums and folders and so on. I'm going to set the expiry to one day. It's now up to a month. That means how long the session is active for in the cloud. So I'm going to push Maria to give me an answer straight away. So I'm going to set this to one day. But if your client is a little bit slow at getting back to you, uh, then you can extend it up to a month. You can add a password if you wish. I'm not going to today. You can also add a watermark as well. And those watermarks come from your recipes. So if any of your export recipes have a watermark, then you can pick it there as well. But no watermark on this one. Now all I need to do is stay, say start sharing. So I'm going to copy this link. And you're going to have to bear with me while I share this to Maria in a second. So this is how it looks and capture on live. So we've got the pictures with their adjustments and we've got the um, star ratings and color tags as well. I'm just gonna open up Teams and give Maria this link. But Teams is notorious for starting up slowly. So let's give uh, Maria, hopefully she's still there. She says she's ready, great. So let's, um, Give Maria this link. Okay, so she should have that. And let's bring up the comments. So this is now in beta currently. So right now, if someone adds a comment on Capture On Live, of course, I can see the comment. Um, and I've asked Maria to tag something purple, which is her favorite. So obviously she's a, a waterfall fan and a, a church fan. So she's tagged these two as purple. And if I just go back to Capture One for a second, you can see those color tags have synced back. Now, importantly, uh, Capture One does not have to be running for this to happen. So I don't need to keep Capture One running. So if I've sent my Capture One live session over to my client, I can quick Capture One and uh, go about my business quite nicely. See, Maria's left a comment. Let's hope it's nice. Can we get rid of the tourists? Oh dear, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. So we've got a bunch of tourists over here. So if I go back into Capture One again, let's find that picture. So these tourists, eh? Pesky tourists ruining the landscape. Um, let's get rid of this person or people. Pretty good. Um, as a bonus, let's get rid of this flagpole or whatever it is. And we've got this very nice lady who actually didn't walk, walk in front of me when I was doing a long exposure. Um, and I think that's it for tourists. So if we go back to capture one, you see it's already updated. Um, look, let's just, if I make a, I'm trying to think of another change I could do so you could see how speedy it is. Um, let's get rid of this blade of grass or something. Okay, so you see this blade of grass, got it. Let's grab my healing brush, let's take that out. Let's go back here, you'll see this blink in a second, and there it is, and it's gone. So it's pretty real time um, in, in that. I love an option with the water all frozen. Oh, sorry, I don't have that. Sorry to disappoint Maria, but I didn't take any with the, the water frozen. So now my client is very upset. Oh, we got another comment here. Uh, love the clouds here. Can we make them more colorful somehow? Sure, we can do that. So if I go back to capture one, let's find this picture. Go to my layer. Uh, let's just give her loads of color and bump up the saturation. And let's add a bit more clarity as well. If we go back, you'll see that update. And then now we've got the, the new one. And I can say, how's that? Is it better? 
So this removes the need, if you like, for an additional um, application, because without commenting, it's a little bit difficult to have that dialogue about the pictures um, if you don't have comments. Now in the future, of course, it would be nice if comments can come to Capture One. There's all kinds of plans uh, to um, uh, improve what Capture One Live can do, but already it's a, a super useful tool. Um, oh God, we've got more comments. I'd take this one out the selection, rude. Uh, obviously not to Maria's taste. Uh, and finally, uh, upset client. So not doing very well on this front. But that gives you an idea of, um, you know, that interaction that you can have with the client. And as I said, really important to stress, you don't have to have Capture One running. All of this can happen in the cloud. Uh, I can quick Capture One. You can give your client, you know, a month maximum to go through. They can make their selects and star ratings. Look, if I now make this sad picture, uh, take the tag away and give it a one star as soon as we go to Capture One, we can see it's now wah, wah, one star, or I can say red, that was a reject, and now it's tagged red immediately in Capture One Live. Oh, another comment. Just kidding, you did great. <laughs> nice, thanks Maria. So this uh, comments has just been added within the last uh, couple of weeks. So if you haven't used Capture One Live yet, then take a look at that as well. All right, um, let's finish off by answering a few questions and then we can let you go about uh, the rest of your evening. Um, Jason, I saw you answer this question a couple of times. Are video supported for client approval page? Uh, not, not as far as I know, Jason. I'm pretty sure it's still uh, images only. Um, let's see, Arthur says, the live feature looks life-changing for reduced wasted time with my customers. How do I get it? Good question, actually. If you don't see live on your uh, toolbar up here, right-click, customize toolbar, and grab the live icon, you'll get five free sessions, five free Capture One Live sessions. And then after that, it's a service as it's cloud-based you can subscribe to. If you go into your account, find your license key under manage my licenses, and then you can add it to that particular license. It's a, um, a month by month rolling contract. So you don't have to sign up for a year or anything like that. If you just want to try it for a month and then cancel, we hope you don't <laughs> and you see the value, uh, but you can just grab it as and when you need it, but you do get those five um, free sessions. Okay, um, let's see. Just checking that I haven't missed any other questions. Um, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Let's try and decipher your question, David. If I start a live session from a session I have on my laptop and then move the session to my desktop, does the access to live move with the session? I don't know, actually, David. I haven't tried it. Um, I would think it would, yes, but don't take my word for it. Give it a try and see. Uh, I think that's um, the, the best way to do it. What controls are there to ensure my work is protected during shared sessions? Password, as I said, so you can put a password on it. You have the control at any point to just kill it. So active live collections, I can just say stop sharing. So for any reason you need to stop, you can do so. Um, so that would just, just kill the session off completely. But password uh, is your most um, obvious one. And watermarking as well, of course. I didn't do it on this particular live session, uh, but you can add a watermark. So you could put preview all the way across it if you're worried about people downloading. I mean, the, the quality of Capture One Live is, is pretty nice, as you saw, what I can look at, but it's not the full resolution. It's big enough to assess focus, composition, all those kinds of things, but it's not uh, the, the full resolution picture. But this could have a huge watermark across the middle if you're a bit worried about that. Um, does Capture Pilot still exist? Yes, you can still use Capture Pilot, um, but to be honest, with Capture One Live, you might find it's a little bit easier. Capture Pilot is a, is a companion iOS app that can do a similar thing to live, but you have to be on the same network. 
Um, Maria, who was making lovely comments uh, on our Capture One Live session, she's sitting in Spain currently, and you saw how quick uh, that interaction was. So with Capture Pilot, you have to be on the same network, which is not nearly uh, as flexible, of course. Um, okay, I'm just going to scroll up a bit to see if I missed any Capture One questions. Um, otherwise, we can say thank you for listening and go for it. Um, in terms of like what features are coming, there's a really good blog post. Uh, Diego, if you're in the comments, then you can pop that in as well. There's a good blog post that talks about current features and expected features. Um, as Matthew said at the start, uh, tethering is definitely the next one that's going to be uh, on the way. Let's just bring up the iPad again because this is meant to be about iPads. Um, tethering is definitely uh, going to be the one that's on the way next and we've had loads of requests in terms of uh, obviously layers, uh, the color wheels, levels, curves, all those kinds of things. So obviously anything is possible this is version one, remember? I think what we wanted to focus on, as I said, was getting that Capture One engine inside. That's really important. Coming up with a user interface that's innovative and easy to use with both hands, your pencil, uh, or a single hand. Um, the ability to start on the road and move those pictures across to Capture One for desktop, where you have the ability to use your calibrated monitor, uh, use additional tools like Wacom pens and so on. Uh, make sure your editing is finessed as much as possible on the big screen and then of course get your client approval with uh, Capture One Live um, as well. Uh, Sony says, uh, I knew we had a lot in common but I wasn't expecting to shot the same scenes in Iceland. Well hopefully we didn't shoot all the same scenes, we tried to go to some of the more obscure ones but I agree that one is definitely not obscure and everybody knows um, this church in Iceland, or at least uh, a lot of us do. Uh, can you tether using the Wi-Fi from the camera? Well, I guess if you can get pictures from camera to iPad and get the iPad to pick them up, technically you can. That's not tethering as, as we would know it, uh, because it involves an extra step, but that would be a halfway house. But as we said at the start, you know, tethering is coming as well. Blog post I was mentioning is coming up, so learn.captureone.com, that's uh, in the comments as well. So uh, that gives you an idea of, of the thought process and so on. Uh, the workflow is not possible if, you're, if you don't have internet. Well, you, you don't have to be internet connected. Sorry if there was anything misleading. You don't need an internet connection to use Capture One. You do, of course, need an internet connection if you want to upload to the cloud, that goes without saying, I hope, and also to download from the cloud, you would also need uh, an internet um, connection as, as well. So yeah, that goes without saying, internet needed for cloud transfer, just for using Capture One, no you don't. Um, in terms of how do I get Capture One, in case you missed that, uh, it's on the App Store, uh, because it's an uh, Apple product, uh, so just search for Capture One, or if you can go to our website, there's a direct link to the App Store or a QR code you can scan on your phone, but if you search for Capture One, then it will come across uh, quite nicely. Um, download that seven day trial where you can mess around and try all the features, and then it's the subscription after that. Depending on your currency, it's gonna vary slightly, of course, uh, but you'll be able to see the exact price once you go um, into the App Store. Um, last but not least, how do we get styles into the iPad? As we said earlier, Matthew, slight passive aggressive tone there, I'm sorry. Um, you just need to get them onto your iPad like via iCloud Drive, Dropbox or something like that. Tap on it once and then it installs it into Capture One. So if I look at my uh, files, there's a bunch of styles. All I need to do is tap once and that opens them into uh, Capture One and then straight away into, uh, and then they're accessible, sorry, straight away into the, the styles tool, as you can see. Um, not needing internet connection is great, especially on events. Yeah, I'll, if we made it internet, I guess compulsory, that would definitely be a disaster, but no, you don't need to have the internet connected. The only reason why I've got 
Wi-Fi running is so we could do the cloud transfer and also so you could see what was going on the screen wirelessly when we did the uh, memory card upload. Is there a manual? Yes, uh, support site has a good quick start guide. I'm also working on some video tutorials. There are some older tutorials we had for the beta testers, but since then the interface has been updated slightly. A few things have been added. So in the coming weeks, I'm not gonna give myself a deadline yet, uh, but in the coming weeks, we have a, a few new videos which go through uh, those basics as well. Great, well, thanks for joining me today. Um, as I said, give it a whirl. Go to the App Store, try it out. It's a fantastic app, whether that's standalone or with Capture One, uh, both works fantastically. So you don't need Capture One Pro on your desktop to be able to use Capture One for iPad. If you're happy with uh, the tool set that we have, which is pretty extensive, you can still export directly uh, from the iPad itself and then carry on in your OS ecosystem for, for exports. So don't feel that you need to have Capture One as well. We'd love you as a customer for both, but it's definitely not necessary. Okay, enjoy the rest of your days. Uh, I hope you have fun with Capture One for iPad. Go ahead and download it right away and see what you can do with it. We'd love to hear. So see you again, see you all again soon and uh, take care, bye now.